How do you install Victron Energy's Smart Solar Charge Controller? Why is my charge controller so hot? And tips for sizing charge controllers, how to know what size charge controller you need. You're watching Taddy Digest, I'm Tad. Let's get started. The reason for upgrading my charge controller today is I've added panels to my system. So before I just had these 100 watt panels, five of them totaling 500 watts. Now I've added four 395 watt panels. So now my maximum current is more than my charge controller is rated for and it's getting really hot. We're gonna use the thermal imaging camera and I'm gonna show you just how hot it's getting. This is a thermal imaging camera made by Kuwait's. I do giveaways every month. For the month of June, I'm actually gonna give away this thermal imaging camera. So if you need one or you want one, check out the live videos to learn about the giveaways. So I've turned on the thermal imaging camera and you can see right here on the ground, it's uh, 73 degrees, right? 75, 74. And then when I come over here, to this charge controller, it is 160 degrees and it's hot. Why is the charge controller getting so hot? We have too much power and it's more power than what this charge controller is rated for. And if you put too much voltage to this charge controller, you can destroy it. This first number, 75, is the maximum PV input voltage. Then the second number, which is smaller than the first number, is 15. This is the maximum DC current. So what happens when you put more than 15 amps of DC current to that charge controller? It does something called clips. And if you were looking at a chart and a curve where you would have the round part at the top, if you have too much peak output of current going to this charge controller, then you would see the top of that curve chopped off. So it's going to limit the output of this charge controller. This charge controller actually has a fuse and that fuse is right here and you can see it's 20. And the other day after I added the panels, I came to my EG4 400 amp hour battery and I clicked the button and I could see that there was 18 amps of current and that's too much for this charge controller. So today, instead of using the 7515, I'm going to upgrade to the 150-70. 150 volts of PV input voltage and 70 amps of DC current. This will allow me to not have a charge controller that gets destroyed. So that's the reason I'm upgrading. I'm gonna talk about where I purchased this, offer you a discount code you can use, and then talk about designing a system, helping you design your system, and then also tips for sizing. Now we're gonna install our new charge controller. Take a look at the side-by-side -side comparison. Excellent. I'm also gonna talk about what bulk absorption and float are in the, today's video. So to install this charge controller, the first thing I'm gonna do is take the DC isolator or the DC disconnect and I'm gonna turn it off. Then I'm gonna take my multimeter and I'm gonna switch the dial to volts DC. After switching to volts DC, I'm gonna use my meter leads and I'm gonna check where it says PV power coming in. And then we're gonna see what it says on the meter. So it says zero. So that means that I'm safe to take these wires off because I do not wanna get shocked and this is the reason that we have a DC disconnect. So we can just take and remove these wires. First step is to remove the wires and I've removed the wires. Now I'm going to take my star bit and I'm gonna take out those deck screws that I use to secure the charge controller to the wall. Charge controller is off the wall. Now let's see where we're going to mount the other charge controller. Right there looks good. Now we've got all four screws installed in the holes so that the controller is secured on the wall. Now we're gonna connect our wires. We've got our connections for our battery on the left, positive, negative, and then our connections for our PV on the right. So these are our PV wires, they'll go over here, negative, positive, and our battery will go over here, negative, positive. And I like how they labeled everything so you can't cross up your cables, your negative and your positive. Let's go ahead and connect the wires. 
Now that we've got the wires connected, we're going to allow the PV power to come to the charge controller by switching on that disconnect. I've also got the VE direct cable connected at the VE port on the charge controller and then connected to the Servo GX so that I can monitor the device. So right here, I have displayed information. Looks like we've got a number 33 error and that's input high voltage. So I can see that by using the Servo GX. If you don't have a voltage meter and you don't have a way of actually figuring out what the voltage is that's coming to the charge controller, then you may not know that you have a high voltage. It's a great thing that I have the Servo GX because it issued me a warning. As soon as I plugged up the VE Direct cable from the VE Direct port of the charge controller to that Servo GX, it was able to monitor and tell me that the voltage is high. I'm gonna show you how to use a meter to check the voltage. That way you can know how high your voltage is. So using the multimeter and putting the dial on volts DC, we're gonna be able to use our meter leads and check from the negative and positive terminal labeled PV and we'll be able to see that our voltage is 179 volts. So I'm going to have to do something different with the configuration and the wiring of my panels, or I'm going to have to remove a panel. That way I can lower that voltage. Now you know how to use your multimeter to check your voltage. Then you can figure out if your voltage is too high. And that's the reason my charge controller was getting so hot. You got to make sure that when you're wiring your solar panels, you know exactly what you're doing. If you're wiring your panels in series, you're going to have an increased voltage. If you're wiring your panels in parallel, you're going to have increased amps. Now these solar panels are tested at certain conditions. So even if this panel is 395 watts, it may not output 395 watts because of the angle, the location, the day. The warmer the temperature, the decrease of PV voltage. The cooler the temperature, the colder the temperature, that will increase the PV voltage. That's something you may need to know as well. So what I can do to lower the voltage, because right now it's 170, but tomorrow that may change. I may need to disconnect one of my panels. I may need to change the wiring of the panels, the configuration, so that I can limit that voltage to less than the rating of this charge controller so that I don't have a chance of destroying it. Depending on the battery bank that you have, whether 12 volt, 24, 36, or 48, will depend on the model of charge controller you need. I'm gonna show you something on the side here that will indicate what battery bank you can use with what charge controller. So right here on the 15 amp, 75 volt, we've got battery output, 12 volt or 24 volt. That means I can utilize a 12 volt battery bank or a 24 volt battery bank. And then if I'm using the 150 or the 250, then I can use a battery bank of 12 volt, 24 volt, 36 volt, or 48 volt. So if you are using a 36 or a 48 volt battery bank and that's your wiring configuration, you need to look at the 150 model and the 250 model. If you need help sizing your charge controller, type in the Google search bar Victron Energy. Then you'll want to go to charge controllers. Once you go to charge controllers, you're going to see it says MPPT sizing calculator. For PV sizing calculation, you can load this up here. You can enter the amount of panels you have, the size, the strings, the cable length, and then the system voltage, and then you'll be able to find out what charge controller size you need. It is not good to overcharge your battery. If you overcharge your battery, you can decrease the life of the battery. And that's why the charge controller uses different stages of charging to efficiently charge the battery. I'm gonna explain each one of those stages. There are LED lights to indicate which stage of charging we are in, whether it's bulk, absorption, and float. The first charging stage is called the bulk charging stage. The charge controller uses the bulk charging stage to fast charge the battery. And whenever it's using the bulk charging stage, then the state of charge is very low. And when the state of charge is very low, it's fast charging the battery and it's controlling the current during the bulk charging stage. Once we reach a higher state of charge, maybe around 80 to 90% charged, then we're gonna enter the second stage, which is the absorption stage. And this is a stage where the charge controller is controlling the voltage and preventing the battery from being overcharged. Then we're gonna reach an even higher state of charge, which is gonna be fully charged, maybe around 98%, 
Then we're going to enter the third stage, and that's the float charge stage. This is when we're going to be maintaining our battery's charge, and the charge controller is going to be controlling the voltage. So during the bulk stage, we're fast charging, we're controlling the current. During the absorption stage, we're preventing the battery from being overcharged, and we're controlling the voltage. During the float stage, we're just maintaining the battery's charge and controlling the voltage. I hope that makes sense. I'll put some information down in the link in the description so you can learn more. Now we are going to read that voltage again and then we're going to unplug some panels. So meter on volts DC, take the meter lead and put it on the PV terminals. 179. You can see it says absorption and float right now. Let's go unplug some panels and then recheck the voltage. So I'm going to disconnect this panel right here, the two MC4 connectors that connect to these two connections on this panel. I'm going to disconnect both those and I'll have these three panels connected. We're going to see how that changes the voltage. Now I've got these two connectors disconnected from this panel. It's isolating this panel from the rest of the array. And then I'm going to connect this back here. So now we have one less panel. Let's go check the voltage. Now let's recheck volts DC. Let's check our voltage, then check our current. So let's see, PV, 108 volts. That is much better, 108 volts. You can see it's in the bulk charging stage before we had too much voltage, and I'm sure that's what was limiting this charge controller from working properly. Now it's not gonna overheat. Let's check the EG4 400 amp hour battery and see what our current is. I bet it's pretty high, 48 amps. That is great, excellent. Now this is gonna work so much better. This is for a display option right here. So if you want to put a display on this charge controller, then you can do that. We're going to use the Victron Connect. This is an app we can use. You can see the smart solar controller right there. And if you can't find the pin on the side of the smart charge controller, you're just going to use the default, which is 0000000. 000 000 000 000. Then we're going to be able to pair. We're going to be able to connect and update if we need to. Looks like we need to update. So we'll be able to see all the information. Once you have connected and you have updated, then you will see the device. And then you'll see information like voltage, wattage, and then the state of the charge. You can see it's in the bulk state right now. So then you can connect and you can see even better view of the information you already have, which is voltage, 110 volts. A current about 8.9 amps voltage for the battery current for the battery 70 amps state of the charge bulk so we are going to be able to charge this battery much quicker and now everything is working properly then we can go over to history it'll keep several days uh, I think a month worth of uh, information for you so you can actually look and then you can see the trend what's happening to the voltages is it going down is it going up right now it's going up then we can click this right here and check out the battery voltage and then the battery current. So this is awesome tool for you to use. And this is why I love Victron Energy's smart solar charge controller. I love the Serbo GX. I've got that VE direct cable. And now you can see we've got our PV. We've got 87 volts, 11 amps, 979 watts, battery voltage, battery current and total yield so no errors right now that's pretty cool i like it having a thermal imaging camera is a great tool to have and let me show you why so you see the charge controller how it's getting a little bit hot 120 degrees well look at the wires look at the wires going to the actual distributor those are the wires that come from the battery terminals and look at how hot those wires are 168 degrees if i didn't have this and i wasn't monitoring then i wouldn't be able to see that and what does that indicate to me that indicates that that's dangerous and i could end up burning these wires in half and to the touch they're really hot so i'm going to have to increase the cable size and make sure I monitor my voltage and my current. Now, I don't want an unsafe situation, so I'm gonna turn the disconnect off 
and I'm going to replace these cables with the right size cables and then I'm going to monitor the system and make sure everything's safe. Safety should be your number one concern. If you don't have the correct system design, you don't have the right components in place, you don't have the properly sized cables, then you could end up in a bad situation. And say this is at your home and you don't have insurance and there's a fire because you did this and you didn't educate yourself or research what you needed to or hire a professional or maybe get your system designed by somebody who knows what they're doing, then you lost it all. And I don't want that to happen to you and that's the reason I showed you this in today's video so that you know that it's not all rainbows and sunshine. You know, there, there's some bad situations that can happen, especially if you're not a professional. See the difference in the cable size? This was a 10 aug. This is a 2 aug. Now that I've replaced the wires with the correct size wire gauge, now it's safe. I turn the disconnect back on and I can use the solar setup. 66 amps of current running through a 10 aug wire, PV wire, that does not work. This wire will carry about 30 amps. This 2 aug wire will carry that 60 amps and it won't overheat and burn in half. If you guys are looking for a solar setup, if you're looking for a solar powered air conditioner, you need to check out Signature Solar. If you need a discount, you can use discount code TADDY50 for $50 off your order of anything over $500. That's where I get all of my solar setups. I get all of my solar powered air conditioners. I get all of my mounting racks. I just got back from Texas, Sulphur Springs, and I got to visit Signature Solar's retail store where you can pick up your solar system after ordering it same day pickup, and you can actually get your system designed for free. They have a design center where they have staff that offer white glove service. So they'll hold your hand throughout the whole entire process. They'll help you pick out the system that will meet your needs, and then you'll be able to actually get that system same day. So they've got a retail store, and if you You'd like information about that retail store the design center click the link to this video to watch that video and you can actually see what signature solar is all about you can order it online or you can go visit their retail store store in sulfur springs texas i hope you enjoyed today's video i hope you learned something if you did learn something let me know what it was down in the comments if you got a question remember questions can lead to new content so please ask the questions down below but if you don't have a question that's okay let me know who you are and let me know where you're from if you need help with your system design if you need a solar system for powering your home an off-grid system or any system to power whatever you need you know where to go signature solar if you want to pick it up same day definitely go check out the signature solar retail store if you need help with your design free of charge definitely call signature solar and talk to weston or any of the other staff that are there that are ready to offer you the white glove service that only signature solar will offer you because they are the best solar supplier in sulfur springs texas and if you want a discount be sure and use discount code TADDY50 if you're ordering online. You've been watching Taddy Digest. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.